Welcome to OpenYAN video series. This video is a part of the OpenYAN video series on computer architecture. In this video, we will be seeing about how an instruction is being executed on a computer. This is a flow diagram of how an instruction is executed on a processor. The first stage is that of fetching. The instruction is fetched from the program counter or from the RAM and is being kept on the fetch state. There are interstate registers between each and every state. After the fetch state, the instruction is being decoded and then the instruction that is being decoded is being kept in the A and B instruction registers. Afterwards, it is being given on to the arithmetic and logical unit for processing. This is the execution state of the instructions. Then after the instruction is ex being executed, the values are stored in the A and B registers and then it is kept onto the memory. After this, the instruction result is being written back onto either the registers or to the RAM. Thus, we have five stages in many of the processes that of fetching, decoding, execution, memory and then writing back. These are the five stages. But it is possible to optimize them further. How do we do it? Just because we have one car that is being processed or being manufactured in one of the Ford plants, it doesn't mean that the other cars are waiting for it to be produced. So, when one car is being is being fitted out with an engine, there is another car the further down in the pipeline that is being fitted out with the doors. There is another car that is being fitted on with the roof. There is another car that is being fitted on with the seat. We have the case of instruction pipelining in the case of processing the instructions on the computer also. We have the instruction fetch, the decode, the execution, memory and the write back being the different stages. And as we can see here, each and every component in the in the pipeline can be kept active when the other component is being done for an another in instruction. So in this case, let's say when the fifth instruction is being fetched, the fourth instruction is being decoded, the third instruction is being executed on the ALU, the second instruction is being kept on the memory and the first instruction is being written back onto the registers. So this is the case of instruction pipelining in so that the data on the instructions can be done in parallel in multiple stages. Hey, but there is a small problem in this. As you can see here in the instruction pipelining, there are three types of hazards. The data hazard, the structural hazard and the control hazard. What if, if the second instruction register is dependent on the first instruction's output? What if, if the third instruction output is dependent on the reading the second instruction's output? These kind of instructions wherein like if A equal to, t a equal to 10, B equal to 5 and C equal to A plus B, in this case, the third instruction is dependent on the first two instructions. These kinds of hazards is known as the data hazard. Structural hazard, if there is a variable or if there is a information that is accessed by two different instructions, let's say if the first instruction is going to fetch it and the second instruction is going to write it, that kind of hazard is known as a structural hazard. Then there is a control hazard. If A greater than B, then X, Y, Z, else M and O. If this kind of branching is there, then the processor will have to decide and that is known as control hazard. Which kind, which instruction has to be fetched and decoded and kept on the pipeline is a decision that will have to be made. Therefore, there are these kind of instruction pipelining hazards that will have to be decided if in case of instruction pipeline. So how do we solve this? The best solution is that of bubble in the pipe. A bubble in, supply in the pipe is known as a delay that is being introduced in one of the instructions such that the instruction pipeline can go. Over here in this example we have move a comma 15, move b comma 20 and add a comma b comma c. The first two instructions go as in, in the pipeline but only in the t plus 5 we have the value of a that is being updated. In t plus 6 is what we have the value of b that is being updated in the pipeline. Therefore the sec third instruction is being introduced a delay of two clock cycles so that it can wait and do the execution after the t plus 6. So the add cannot happen till the new values of a and b are available and therefore two instruction bubbles are being introduced. Thus we can have a proper execution. As it is we have seen how an instruction is being executed on a uh, computer and how the hazards can be avoided by using a bubble. Thank you for watching this video. Do join us in facebook.com slash openyarn and write to us at ping at openyarn.com. Have a nice week. Have a nice day. Bye.